Welcome back to part three of this week's Yaha. Yawa. You ask, we answer. And in this question, you might be asking, why are we pouring fancy sparkling juice stuff into fancy sparkling juice containers? Well, if you want to know, you should go back and watch part one and two as we talk about it there. I've got one little announcement for the beginning of this one. Okay. We like to announcements, announcements, announcements. Okay, let's go. We have used bird launchers. We've had a few people ask, and I want to let you know that we have three, count them, one, two, three, used DT Systems 500 series launchers that come with the transmitter. Hey, old man, don't trip over my cord. Don't unplug us. Come back, come back this way. What do you want? What are you wandering around for? Oh goodness, Grandpa. Okay, go, Baba. Go, go. He about shoo, unplugged shoo. the shoo. audio equipment. Shoo, shoo. Okay, okay. So we have the three launchers. Um, I will go ahead and all you got to do if you want. There are three. So if you're interested, throw in the comments. I want one. I want two. I want three. Um, get with us. I will get you pricing on that. It's really good pricing. So I will say uh, it's there, but it's also not something that I can post or advertise. So it's not allowed. It's not allowed. Just throw it in the comments. If you're interested in some used launchers, we're ready to move those on. We move our equipment on and recycle it on a regular basis. And this is time for the bird launchers <laughs> to go. Okay. Now that Ethan's done with his little sob story over here, we're gonna start answering some questions. I love this Instagram hashtag, so gonna answer their question. Just bird dogging it up. Hashtag or is that the uh, or whatever handle? Handle hashtag what do you whatever. Call it? I don't know. I I not a hashtag. Am not really an Instagrammer, so. Well, it's not a hashtag. Whatever. I like your name. Just bird dogging it up. Are you building a whole new kennel or adding on to the one you have? If all a whole new, new kennel. If all new, will you still use the old one? No. So, yes, all new construction, all new kennel, everything will be transitioned over to the new kennel very shortly. Check out our newsletter for updates. We actually just put that out today. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can sign up on our website and subscribe to that so that you don't miss really cool announcements and it's just uh it's we we put them out monthly yes just so you give you give oh, an okay. idea More it's info. a note from ethan and cat so you get some of the general information there you also get a calendar of some of the events that we're going to where we'll be what we'll be doing and then we kind of throw every once in a while a little easter egg if you will some special things just for the newsletter subscriptionettes and script scriptioners okay and then will we use our old one for the kennel. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I am going to get my garage space back because I haven't been parking in a garage for months now because all the stuff that's supposed to go in the new kennel is now in my garage. And then the current kennel is filled with dogs and kennel stuff. So it will be very nice to have our garage space back. Our current kennel is a additional building it was on the property when we moved in because we thought we need something to keep rolling because we had the kennel business before we moved to here where we're at. And it worked out great. It is a just an extra garage building. So once we move stuff out of there, we'll be able to move garage stuff into the garage. Yes. Another question that has a lot to do with training in the kennel is from noel.vo1 on Instagram. How do we send my dog to you if we want you to train her? Awesome. So a really great way to start that process off is to send us an email. We are really good about getting back to emails. And then we can start that conversation of what your goals are, when we have availability. We are typically around six plus months out for training spots because we limit the number of spots we have available. Uh, we believe in quality versus quantity of dogs that we get in for training. So yes. we want to do the best job we can with each dog that comes in, not just roll a whole bunch of dogs through the facility. So um, that limits the amount of space that we have available, especially because our minimum requirement stay is a minimum of two months. Um, but typically that's closer to three months and some dogs stay longer. So that also takes up space in the kennel for a long amount of time. 
hundred percent. So if you're interested, definitely reach out to us, shoot us an email or a message on one of the social platforms. But thanks for the question. And then this was a cool question. I just want to say from Lexi underscore bean two on Instagram. No, this isn't really a Yawa, but can you make a YouTube video with all of our dogs in it? And I think that that would be a great idea. We kind of just did a recent video on why we love short hairs and we featured quite a few of our dogs in that video, but it would be really fun to do kind of a highlight video of all of our dogs because we love them so much. So thank you Hmm. for the suggestion. We'll try and see if we can do that. It would be kind of fun. Um, There's often a good time if we don't have pregnant mamas, we could do it um, where we could run them all together in the field at one time. And you would see all, um, depending on who we have and who can run with it, but we'd have all eight or 10 or 12 dogs on point and backing all on the same bird. It'd be pretty cool. Even grandpa could get in on that. Grandpa would definitely steal all the points. Yeah. He doesn't back anymore. I blame that on his vision, not his nose. Yeah. (laughs) But that's a really great suggestion, and I'd love to do something with that. So we will try and put that on the docket and get something rolling. Perfect. Next question from quake.gsp. I bark and whine while my mom makes me my dinner and breakfast. How can my mom help me not do this anymore? I wanted to ask this question because we are seeing a very similar trend with our newest puppy, Thunder. He's a little noisy. He is, like, gets that noisy whining when we're trying to feed him or do clicker training sessions. And in one of our next live videos that we do with him, I wanted to show that um, way that we're going to work through that because we've noticed it in the last couple sessions. I'm like, this is becoming worse, so we need to address it now so it doesn't become a habit. So it's a great question. Make sure to be watching for those Instagram live videos. They also will get popped up on our Instagram TV once we finish shooting them. Instagram TV is a great way to keep up on all of the new content. It's a new thing that we're doing now. Um, It's been around for a little while. We've posted some stuff up and down and yada, 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 but now we're gonna actually be sharing all of the YouTube videos. So just like these are gonna be coming. Uh, I think everything but Yawa, all of our training videos is what we talked about, will be on, also thrown right up there on the IGTV. Okay, next question from underscore J Rock on Instagram. And I love this question because Ethan and I always talk about what is our true purpose for doing YouTube videos. And it's to help educate people and share our advice and our knowledge and all of the information that we have. So this is a great question. What do you recommend for someone who has never had a hunting dog that was trained for hunting, but wants to get one or get into hunting with a dog? That that is a really, I'm like, he's going to spill struggle busting it here. So that's a really good question. Yes. And I would say that the more knowledge you can have before you even start, the does better. He have, does he have the dog, do you say? No, he says before getting, getting, getting one getting or getting, getting into one. hunting with a dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they want to get one and get into hunting with a dog. I like and it. they've never done it. I like it. So doing your research, I mean, obviously you're asking questions and you must be watching some of our videos to get some information. That would be a really great place to start is watching some training videos, watching some hunting videos. Uh, Which we have both. On our channel. We do. Mm -hmm. And then also I would recommend taking a hunter safety class. It's a great idea. Because it's very important to be able to handle a firearm safely and hunt safely when you have a dog. And even if you don't have a dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another really good one would be if you get the opportunity or if you can um, come to one of our seminars. Uh, You can come as just an observer and it gives you the opportunity to watch other people with dogs and us handle dogs and see kind of that training level. Now I would recommend that you pick one that's more geared toward introductory stuff like a puppy or which is coming up in a couple weekends. We have our puppy training one in June, which would be a good option. And we've got a few spots available. We are open. We are able to do this unless something crazy changes in the next couple weeks here, but um, we will have the seminar here. It is posted on our website, standingstonekennels.com slash store you can go right there and see and June a puppy seminar. seminar so if you have a puppy you're within a reasonable driving distance of us um, which reasonable to everybody is a little bit different we've seen recently but um 
definitely see if you can get one of those last few spots available and get all of the introductory stuff with your puppy. But even if you don't have a puppy, you can just sign up as an observer to get the information. Come watch. And we do have another one, I think, in September. Come one, come all. That is for hunting prep, which might not be a bad one if you can't make the puppy one to also get a pretty good introductory idea of how these dogs are going to be utilized for hunting. We talk about in that one specifically how to actually take your dog and hunt. We'll evaluate some different fields and discuss winds and things like that and say, this is how we would, you know, go after this specific property to try and best utilize our dog to be a a really beneficial help in that hunting situation. And then my last recommendation would be try and find a mentor of some kind that could help you. Uh, Somebody that has dogs, a similar breed that you're interested in getting would be beneficial as well so that they have a similar hunting style. Um, And maybe you can even tag along in the field for a few hunts. You wouldn't be hunting, you wouldn't be shooting anything, but you'd be able to watch them hunt, see what they're doing, watch their dogs work. Something like that would be really beneficial. Somebody that you can ask questions of as well and have kind of a one-on-one relationship with Who is that um, can take you under their wing. Under their wing. Who is that? Uh, who has the mentor program? Isn't there somebody that set this up? I don't know. I think it was, uh, I think it's a Project Upland thing that they were it, talking about catering to, well, maybe they were just talking about catering more to a specific I know that a lot of organizations are talking about like the three R's of recruitment, retention, and what's the other word? I don't, I don't know. know. Pheasants Forever does that. I know NAVDA organization does a lot with trying to bring they new people. a lot of stuff All together. these organizations yeah. that have dogs and hunting based ideals are under the, we all know that the sport could die out if we don't bring in the right people to continue it, which and introduce yes, them, right? I mean, I think yeah. that there is really there really has been boundaries put up. Um, a lot of uh, hunters, bird dog people, um, some of them, let's go, a majority of them can be guys, and a lot of guys can get some. Oh, let's go with they can be arrogant assholes and. Um, I mean, this is being serious, you know, and it it becomes more of a, like, I don't want to go with them because they're just going to make fun of me because I don't know what's going on. You know, I mean, there's a lot of that teasing and making fun and poking fun rather than saying, hey, we get that you don't know how to do this and we would love to bring you along to show you because hunting is such a huge part of my life. And, um, you know, it's not just about killing, it's about camaraderie and getting to work with the dogs and being out in the outdoors. I, I don't want to say in nature, but in it, it outdoors, is part of that. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's... Um, Especially for people that have to sit in an office all day. Like, this is what they live for, getting that opportunity to be outside, working with their dogs. 100%. So, uh, it's... Uh, looking for a mentor is a great idea. And I think that a lot more people now are more open to that and realize that being a mentor is a good way to continue to grow... Um, the well, hunting community as opposed to watching it continue to diminish and move toward the direction of, you know, electronics and other electron or what would be the word like digital, the digital phase. I mean, everything is based around doing sitting in things. front of a computer yeah. and not getting out there. And this is a great way to do that. So good very question. good question. Uh, this was a question that was asked by a couple of people, and we are in that. One, one last list. caveat with that. Okay. Oh, come on now. <laughs> That's fine. It, I just thought just, you were going to tell me I couldn't ask one more question. No, one, one more caveat with it. Just um, if you, you are looking for somebody, we talk about mentors. We know a lot of people have a lot of connections around the United States. If you get with us, shoot us a message, and we can maybe help. Um, find somebody that's in a general vicinity. Yeah, and even or if connect they don't, you with a network of people yes. that have a passion yep. for the outdoors and for hunting and for dogs that would be a good group of individuals for you to connect with. Reach out. We're here to help. Um, okay. Now that he's not cutting me off for my last question. <laughs> uh, I was like, I'm sorry. Now we have to cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do not. Um, from green. I got the button. From Greenhouse Kennels, what do you use for flea and tick on all your dogs? This is a good question. I think it was seconded by somebody else, and it's that time of year where the ticks are coming out, if they haven't already. Who let the ticks out? We use Brevecto for flea and tick prevention with all of our dogs. It's The Brevecto that we use is an oral tab that they eat. But why, cat? 
why not just put the stuff on their back? Because it's so greasy and icky and sticky and I don't like it. Okay. Why not use a tick collar? Well, I don't really like the tick collars because every time I go to reach for a dog, I happen to grab a hold of that tick collar and pop it right off there, sir. And then I'm like, Ugh, I got to put this back on. Um, they do work well, those tick collars I've heard. We don't use them on our personal dogs, so I can't technically speak for that. But I've heard people like them, that they're pretty pretty effective. Yeah, but for me, I'm always reaching down for dogs and training and stuff, and then they're falling off. Um, and so what I typically end up doing is zip tying to the dog's flat to the collar. Inside of the flat collar, yeah. But then they're zip tied to the inside of the flat collar, so then when you have to take the flat collar off to give a bath or do whatever, then you got to undo the zip ties. So eh, for me and with all of the dogs that we have in our own home and in the kennel, I prefer an oral chew. And I like the three month ones because it's less that I have to worry about and think about You can put it on a schedule and make sure that they're getting it every three months. Yeah. And we never have any issues with ticks. I mean, I don't remember the last and time I've seen a tick on a dog. For us with our dogs, because we do have a breeding program, it is safe for us to give to our moms who yep. are pregnant or nursing. So we can do that without any worries. Um, the one thing that we can't do is like our newest little puppy thunder. He's a little guy. He's going to be growing pretty darn quickly. And so I don't have uh, an oral three months that I can give him because his weight's going to change so fast that there's a chance that he's out of that weight range too quickly. Um, so once he is 44 pounds, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy because that range for the Brevecto is from 44 to 88 pounds. And I know with none our short hairs, short. none of them are going to be over 88 pounds. So once he's at 44 pounds, he can just get on the Brevecto schedule with the rest of our dogs. So that was a great question, and I don't think that I have time for another one. So I'll try and squeeze in a few more in part four. Thanks for watching. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. <laughs> 